Right, I'm going to switch over to Molly Cheshire because this is, this is something she's been wanting to do. She's into practical stuff. So here we go. Okay, so Paul, all you're going to do... Ladies and gentlemen, this is... I'm going to introduce Molly Cheshire. Ta-da! Uh, and Molly favorite. and I were in India together when we met Philip and his... Um, and just, just see if... Oh, I can, I can do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I'll get you. Great. Is there any time left on the tape? Yeah, yeah, we've got um, 38 minutes, which we usually like to do half an hour shows. Um, okay. Can you see uh, Molly, Rosie? No, uh, I can see you and him, and it seems kind of paralyzed. I'm watching the live feed. Uh, hit refresh. Hit refresh, okay. Um, we, we don't have the optimum streaming situation. Oh, okay, I see her. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, so all of you out there, if we're frozen, hit refresh. <laughs> we, okay. You have 37 minutes left, so. Okay, let me just get my hair. Uh -huh. <laughs> just gets, I hate it when it sticks out like that. Nice. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm about to start. So... Uh, Hi, this is Molly Cheshire and Meetings with Remarkable People. Today's guest is Philip Lippitz and we were at an ashram together in India and I feel like I should give a little bit of background on you but we're going to keep that, cut that short and, and focus right. really on the techniques for transmuting negative energy. And I think this is very uh, practical information. It's not just spiritual knowledge and, and a lot of us do it unconsciously and, and right. we've been doing it unconsciously it's, and it's when you do it with consciousness and focus that it exponentially becomes more effective. Right. So, um, so why don't you give a little bit, just in a nutshell, who you are, where you came from, how many books you've written and, and about what. <laughs> well, I... Uh... Have I'll, written. I'll, I'll hold, I'll hold them you should, up. She'll hold up all these books. I've written uh, international best-selling diet books. Uh, you don't have good to calorie diet, naturally slim and powerful. Talked in all the international shows. I'm a PhD. Have dozens of scientific. And you went to Antioch, right? And I went to Antioch, which is a very cool school. Yes, I think in so. In Ohio. Yes. And the world. And I've written whole bunches of spiritual books. Spiritual too. books. Here's the spiritual books. Oh, hang on. Of my experiences is studying with a man named Swami Kaleshwar, Kaleshwar.org. And, and you originally, I mean, at Swami Kaleshwar's ashram, which is where we met, and before you were with Swami, you were with Muktananda for how many years? Oh, since the early 70s. I actually hosted him here in Columbus, Ohio, in 1974. And so you were with him for 10 years, 20 years? Well, he died in 1982. Okay, so you were with Eight. him for 10 years. Yeah. In the body. In the body. He's yeah. still with you, of course. He actually used to physically appear in front of people all the time. Wow. Uh, did he ever, did he ever appear in front of you? Oh, absolutely. What was it but, like? But, 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 but the most interesting thing was, one time, he had had a heart attack. He was still alive. He'd uh -huh. had a heart attack. So to get rid of the negativity, as you know in the ashram, right. you shave your hair, you shave your beard, oh. you do all that. I but see. I still had all the old pictures. We had a beard and all that. So... I was teaching a meditation center here, and a bunch of black Baptist church ladies, nine of them, showed up because they wanted to see, you know, interdenominational faith, okay? I mean, these are very prim and proper church-going ladies, right. okay? So we go through the meditation, and when we're meditating, I look up and I see Muktananda going around touching them all on their third eye, huh. giving them energy. And I'm going, I'm not going to say a word <laughs> to any of these ladies because they're going to think I'm crazy. I and, mean, and he was known for raising people's kundalini through shakti yeah, pot. Yeah, through giving the touch, right. And so we're sitting there and sharing, and one lady says, I think I saw your baba. And another one said, yes, he was going around touching everybody between wow. the third eye. And, the, and finally, a third lady said, no, this couldn't be your baba because this guy had all this hair shaved and he had no beard. And he had shaved his head? He had just shaved his head like three wow. weeks before. So I had never heard of, of 
the idea. I always wondered why tonsure was so important. You know, when we went to Tirupati, there's a seven-story building devoted to it. Right. And I didn't realize that that is a way of getting rid of negativity. Right. There is a parallel reality going on simultaneously. People call it the world of the soul. You could call it the quantum cloud, the vacuum cloud, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's a simultaneous reality. But negativity is a function of this world, the physical world. Right. So if you can move your consciousness simultaneously to a world in which there is no negativity, negativity can't touch you. That's why saints can do the most outrageous things and nothing happens to you. Well, the interesting thing is, is that before we really get into these practical techniques, you were talking about a, uh, a world that exists between the quantum world and the sort of classical world, the 3D world that we live in. And what is it called again? The mesiotropic world. The mesiotropic world. And that is that slim band where the two worlds meet. meet. Right. The, the quantum world is the world of the very, very, very small. And unfortunately, the quantum things that we want to have, like where consciousness can affect quantum but effects. And, 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 and really, consciousness is a function of the quantum world. Well, we'll get into that in okay. just a minute. Here. Then there's the big world, which is the world we see of bodies and right. all that. But it turns out there's a world in between, where it's big enough that the big world rules apply, but right. still small enough that the quantum rules apply. Right. This is the only world where the quantum effects really affect physical things that you can see. And in this mesiotropic world, quantum effects where create life. Life is nothing but molecules that were set up to be able to pick up quantum effects I see. and put them into physical reality. Consciousness is the same thing. Roger Penrose, who's you know, got a Nobel Prize, has written b whole articles on the fact that the brain contains within it these little receptors that pick up the quantum world and change it into the physical world. So, so let's get back to uh, negativity. There's, okay. there's some basic concepts that we learned at the ashram and uh, you know basically going through nature elements right and and when we mean nature we don't mean like just what you see out in the park this is nature this is nature you know we're all made up of right. these elements and you know fire water air ether and what's the, what's the other one earth 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 so um the sky element is, is, is ether. the ether so you can decharge very powerfully with the fire element. With any of the elements, actually. Well, I, I, I don't yeah, know. I find yeah. fire to be extremely Everyone effective. has their one element that they and have water, the connection with. No, and water is... Yes. No, no, but and water, fire and water to me, you know, for example, one of the reasons why it feels so good to take a bath or hi, any kind of hydrotherapy is, is that it washes a lot of the negativity out. Right, showers and all that. Showers, yes, you know, right, when, you know right. whenever we would have to go to see, have a discourse, you know, it would be like, you know, run for the showers because, you know, Swami wanted us all right. decharged before we showed up, which, which was always a bit of a hilarious moment because there wasn't any hot water or <laughs> not enough showers. And, and there was eight people to a small room with one small dripping tap. And, and here comes the postman. Uh, right. Mrs. Lippitz, oh, maybe he's just, he's not yeah, going to knock on yeah. the door. So, uh, and then, okay, so what's your favorite element to decharge with? To decharge yeah. with? Well, the one I recommend for my students okay. is earth. 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 Because earth get, has a lot of effects. When you get in touch with the earth element, it's very solid, it's everywhere, so you can decharge into it easily. And it also gets you in touch with the guru principle, which is, the guru principle is nothing but the doorway between this reality and I the see. reality where there is no negativity. Right. So it actually changes your consciousness to be able to get in touch with that. But let's say you're living in New York and Central Park is too far away. How do you use the earth element to decharge when you don't have access? You, you can't, like, for example, you supposedly you put your thumb on the earth as you're doing the earth right. mantras. You can have a little black stone with you, natural oh. one, and just decharge into that. But then well, I carry you... ordinarily. I don't have it today because I didn't want my pocket to be bulging on TV. <laughs> but I have a little black stone that I carry around me, and I decharge directly into that. 
But what happens when you, when that, that stone gets gets so full it's of negativity? It's fine. The black stone, you don't have to worry about. You, you don't have Listen. to like like it, it won't like put a hole in like the yeah. table when you set it up. Yeah, the whole theory is is that you get in touch with a element that makes up the whole universe. Then your little bit of negativity. It's a peanut. It's a peanut. I got it's you. a peanut compared to all the energy being experienced by the earth. Well, but let's get back to more practical things. Like, for example, roses really absorb a lot of negativity. Yes, and rose water. Washing your hands with rose water, rose water. gets rid of negativity. It's it's unbelievable. But, but what's interesting to me is is that you know sort of the the ritual of bringing flowers to people in hospitals. You know, when I started studying with Swami, all of a sudden it just made so much sense that. You know, we naturally do these things. Right. And if you look at the Chinese leaders, they figured it out. Take a look when a Chinese leader is giving a lecture. He's sitting there and, you know, giving a press conference or something, and he's got 12 feet of flowers separating him from the press. He huh. is totally insulating himself from right. the negativity. I mean, I remember when I was sick at the ashram and I put a rose in my hand and I literally could feel it wilt just with the amount of energy that was going into it, or that it was pulling out of right. it. Right. And, uh, I mean, I, and I felt better. I mean, and if you don't have a rose, any flower will work, or any living leaf will work. And but throw ahead. it away afterwards, because all the negativity is in it. Just put it in nature, or put it in... Well, and I think that you know, animals do this naturally. Yeah. Supposedly, that's why pets make people feel so much better, is, is that you decharge into the poor pets, <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then they go out and take a walk and get rid of it sort of naturally. Peter is going to be after you for saying this and you're decharging it to the pets. But it's true. It is true. They don't even think you should have pets. Oh. I mean, they think that that's abusive to the pets. However, they say that pets are benefited by being with their masters. I don't know. They get more intelligent, if that means yeah. anything. I think people get more intelligent. You know, the animals actually see energy forces that we don't see. Oh, absolutely. You know, my house is haunted, for example. <laughs> and, uh, well, it sounds funny. I'm going to reconsider the, your invitation well, to Well, no, visit. we got rid of them. Okay. No, no but it was funny because this friend of mine who got rid of one of the ghosts, uh, she came over and her dog came yeah. with her. And we were sitting at the kitchen table, and the dog was sort of looking into the dining room uh -huh. like there was something there. And Patty and I were like, I'm like, Patty, you know, I thought you got rid of the ghosts. They're still here because if Eliza can see them, you know, right. there's something going on. So I, I, I'm, I'm full on board with that. But let's go into, you know, more decharging techniques because I know that there's just a slew of them and, you know, the shaving thing well, is a new Well, you know, one. you can actually do uh, uh, what the dogs do. Go walk in nature when a negativity arises. That decharges it naturally. And, and I think salt water is, is better than just regular water, I mean, from what I understand. I mean, doesn't salt pull it a little bit more? I'm not familiar with that technique. Because I had a massage the other night, and she said, I put a bowl of salt water, you know, sea salt, and then I pour it out afterwards. And you can, you know, dabs around mm -hmm. the water, and it's clear at the beginning of the massage, right. and at the end it's like, you know, off the charts. But let me tell you the greatest secret okay, of all. Okay, do tell. Love and gratitude. The Dalai Lama calls it divine selfishness. You want to know why saints are so loving? It isn't necessarily because they look at you and go, Ah, <laughs> you're so sweet. It's they've discovered that the best way to deflect negativity is to make other people come towards them in gratitude. And then that makes it so whatever energy is being put out there is being pulled by the other person. So in other words, if I come to you as a teacher, right? So basically they're just you, dumping all their negativity into their students. No, it actually goes to nowhere. I see. It okay. actually goes to nowhere. See, negativity has got to have a return address, a mailing address. If I talk to you right. from ego, right. the negativity goes, ah, Philip, you know, let's send 5,000 units <laughs> on his way. If, on the other hand, I'm talking to you without ego, in gratitude for you, that's uh -huh. putting the energy over to you uh, for pulling the energy from me and for the opportunity to serve you. There is no ego there, and the negativity doesn't know where to go. It has nowhere to hook into. That's right. So serving other people creates a situation where the negativity can't hit can't you. Can't hook it. And you, but you can't do it in...
you, you poor person. No, 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 but, but like uh, uh, the Dale Carnegie approach, right? It, if you do it sincerely, it works great, but if you do it just sort of as a, a manipulative technique, it yeah, doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, it actually hits you twice as hard. So, there you, you go. Twice. Now, Dalai Lama calls it divine selfishness. It's, you're being divine to the person for selfish reasons because it helps you. You're being nice to people because it helps you. Well, I, I think also it, it, it short circuits that whole idea that you're going to get something for being nice. You know, as, right. as someone once said, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> right. So that what that does is it, is it takes out of the equation that need to have a something quid pro quo, something for something kind of situation. Right. Exactly. Just the opportunity to serve someone benefits you. Right. Gets rid of the negativity. Hmm. When I'm serving you, when I'm being on your show, I'm getting more out of it than you, just in terms of energy flow. Energy flow, but you're going to get more out of it than me because hopefully some people will come to your workshop in New York. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when you teach your classes, how does that look? When I teach a class, I teach people how to get in touch with the most powerful way of decharging negativity, which is the elements itself. Right. And I give them a simple technique. After 41 days, you not only know how to decharge the negativity. Whoa, 41 days of all those mantras. I I'm never got through all those. 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day. I never could get through all those mantras. 20 minutes a okay, day. Okay, so, that, so, so, so what happens if I don't do all those mantras for 41 <laughs> days? Can I still get any benefits? Yes, you can get benefits from other methods of decharging negativity. So why don't you negativity. give us the... Why don't you give us the I can't other... give it away on the TV show. Oh, come on, give it away. Because the thing is, is that, you know, I, I find that videos don't give you half the Shakti of real life. And the Shakti's energy, spiritual energy. Sorry about that. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I'm kind of a Shakti junkie. So that sometimes watching the video is nice, but, but seeing the person in real life is, is the real deal. And, and so you can really pull a lot more shakti. Yeah. Actually, there are people who have created international bestsellers. The guy who wrote The Alchemist gives away all of his books on the internet. He pirates his own books onto BitTorrent things. His publishers think he's crazy, but it created this international phenomenon where he has all these bestsellers. People read the pirated version and go, I want the book. Right. I want it, the book. And, right. and his publishers were ready to sue him because he was pirating his own books. I think that's, is that binary economics? I don't know. I, I wonder if we have Rosalie here. It's all dead. Is that? Because I want her to get uh, she, she hung up, I think. Okay. But anyway, keep her in mind. No, she's, she's listening, hopefully. Okay, good. Um, but I, I think the, the whole topic is fascinating. So, okay, so if, if, if I'm not going to buy into doing the 41 days of charging up all these mantras. I can actually next, give you another decharge mantra. Come on. And just. So, so that I can just like do it quickly like in like one day? <laughs> oh, Maha Papa Prachalana Stai Shakti Raksha. There okay. it is. Well, uh, well, that, 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 now if you do that now, mantra. And how many times do you that do that mantra, this mantra? Well, you're supposed to charge it, but. Do this mantra and, create, and take a little cotton string like this. Yeah. Hold it in your hand for 10 minutes. Do this mantra yeah. before you go into a business meeting or something like that. Oh. Tie the charge string around your wrist. Right. Go into your meeting, your protective or date or whatever it is. <laughs> you mean, you, you need, and I don't know what then, kind of dates you go on. <laughs> I'm hoping to not have to go into combat when I go on a date. But, um, but I, and know. then decharge the negativity will protect you. Then when you're done, throw that throw away. Throw that away. All right. Well, we'll get Paul to uh, do a graphic on what the mantra was. So how long do you have to do the mantra? That was 10 minutes holding the string in your hand. 10 minutes holding, holding the string. And but, if you're in a situation where you're trying to do something with energy, do that mantra, and that throws, that ma uh, that throws the energy off, okay. uh, the negative energy but, but, off. Okay, can we just get away from mantras? Mantras and You I hate just, mantras. Well, it's I, not that I, I hate I've known them. you for years. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I tell you who, who made me really like mantras. I like bhajans. If mantras can be bhajans, I, I can do them well, with a heartbeat. Well, when I'm in New York City, I travel sometimes with a kirtan, the kirtan band. band. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Cohen and Associates, and they're great. Right. So, I mean, Christian... Oh, yeah. 
Something practical for Rosalie. Yeah, yeah, something more practical than mantras. Like for Rosalie. She for Rosalie. Rosalie. Grab a black stone, preferably a black stone that's naturally why, formed. Why is black more... I don't know why God set uh, up the universe uh, yeah, yeah, this no, way. Just, you talk to him and then let me know. Okay, so, so a black stone, a black you grab stone, a black grab stone. black stone and consciously just try to decharge into it. And, and how do you consciously decharge? You just You say, hold it in your hand and go, I'm getting rid of the negativity, I'm getting rid of the negativity, I'm getting rid of the negativity. So you can do that. That's easy. Anyone can do and, that. And, and as I said, taking a shower yeah. or a long bath. Rose salt. water is amazingly rose water. powerful. I mean, how much rose water do you have to put in? Like a whole bottle? No, no, no. no. Just put a few sprinkles in your hand. Wash okay. your hands. Wash your face. Okay. And then, uh, you know, and if it's really bad, wash the bottom of your feet, believe it or not. Well, because that is supposedly a power spot. Oh, oh, absolutely. And your, I mean, your hands, you can send, it's easy to send energy through your hands. Right. And, um, but the feet are the same way. Right. You know, a lot of energy is coming out I mean, your feet all the time. Swami used to say, you know, after his birthday yeah. when we were there, he go, oh, my feet hurt so much, you know, because, you know, all the devotees would, yeah. would kiss his feet. And they thought that they were being devotional, but actually they were sending him all of their negative energy. Exactly. Unconsciously. Exactly. And he was sucking it all and in. And then we used to have to massage his feet so he could walk afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's why he would sit by his fire pit. And also, just looking at a fire will, will just naturally take that's the negative absolutely, energy. That's absolutely, absolutely. Even just a candle. Getting in touch with any of the elements, even without the mantra. Exactly. You charge it. Well, that's your thing. I'm, I'm trying to supercharge it. I know, I don't know. I, I, I... I will do the mantras eventually, but if I don't have Krishna does singing them, you know, if I could get him to, maybe I should give him a copy of all the mantras, you know, the earth, the sky, the water, and then if he could put it to music, then I probably would be able to do it. Actually, Gustav, you remember Gustav? Yeah. He did an album of the mantras according to music. Well, can we, where can we get this? I, I might have it on MP3 when we're done. I, I want one. Yeah, different people are just connected with different elements. How do you so, figure you know, out fire. which element? Which one are you attracted to? Well, I mean, I like... Fire is actually one of the most powerful methods of decharging negativity. That's, that was my impression. I mean, I actually like water the best. And I like... I mean, but believe me, I just bought a huge fire pit for my, for my house. Uh -huh. And Paul and I have been doing Agni Hotras. Okay. That's kind of our our thing. You know, okay. do, you, do you know anything about Agni yeah. You do yeah. it right at sunset. Yeah. And there's two minutes, yeah. and you do it with cow dung and ghee, and you throw the rice. It's traditional method. Policemen on the you, on yeah. Trail. <laughs> but um, so, but so so fire, water. Uh, but you see, even more important than decharging it is getting to the point where you can sense the negativity, sense the energy channels, and know, oh, the negativity is less now, it's more powerful now, uh -huh. and be able to deal with it, and, and deal with what is opposing you in your life. I see. And then what do you do once now, you figure out what's opposing thing, you? One thing that people haven't figured out, that I'm going to tell you, is a okay. great secret here. Uh, yes, exactly. I'm all ears. Is, you know, I always talk about how Positive is accompanied by the negative. You can't separate right. the two of them. So if you're doing something positive, the negative will come and will oppose you. And I say that the reason that that happens is negativity is just the way of nature keeping the creation going. If we all could do whatever we want, creation would fall apart. Right. We wouldn't have the collective consciousness. But what I don't talk about generally is, is that in a negative moment, the positive also has to be there. Now, we're so busy right. being negative that we don't see that there's all this positive energy that has to be there at that moment. Right. So when you get hit by something random out of the way, we generally spend our time going, oh, woe is me. But we should be saying, wow, there's some positive energy here. I can do something you here. Can... That I have this opportunity to do something of unusual power right now. And, um, I mean, I've been working with that. I call that transmuting the energy. And, I mean, for example, I've just been through a whole heartbreak. And instead of just collapsing, somehow I managed to, to, to transmute it, and it gave me a ton of right. energy. The positive and the negative go together. So if you're mired in the negative, 
there's this incredible amount of positivity that we generally ignore. But how, okay, for example, how do you transmute negative energy in that, in those circumstances? And, and if you could give us sort of some practical... Well, I use mantras, so you want me to tell you how I do it without mantras? Yeah, how do you do it without mantras? <laughs> Like, like, how do I do it with two hands tied behind my back and standing right, so, on one so leg and jumping? All right, so when you just recently okay. got divorced, yeah. right? How did, well, how that did, was four years back. Well, all right, right. So what's the most traumatic thing that you that happened and to you? And that's just Swami Kalesh where I had me charge one mom for four and a half million times right after that. So this isn't the time to talk about that. But when something negative does happen well, to give, me, give, okay, last I time try to force myself into action to do something positive because that energy is there. Right. And if I start riding that energy, I only I not only get something done, and done more effectively than I could before, but the negativity goes away because I'm riding give, the positive. Give us a, a real example, like 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 just just like tell us what happened to you and and how you managed to. It doesn't have to be too personal. That uh, yeah, that's right. I'm trying to avoid all the personal ones. That you know, all of the. You know, 253 people are watching this on the, on the stream. <laughs> well, you never know. There'll be thousands when we, when we post it. Okay. Um, well, yeah, you know, for example, recently I had an internet company going. Mm -hmm. Fell apart. The guy that was working for me had some personal problems that he had to deal with. Okay. So it fell apart. Right. And so I'm sitting there going, okay, I can sit here and mourn it, or I can say this is. I'm supposed to have someone better. And I'm using this opportunity to find someone better. Now, I didn't go into the phone book. I just said, OK, there's this positive energy here. And this positive energy right at this moment will make me attract more easily what it is I need. So I said, OK, I'm using the energy of this situation to attract it. Turns out I put an ad in the newspaper to sell one of my computers because I needed the money. Right. The guy I was buying it to, I ended up talking to, you know, a day or two later, or selling it to rather, and he's going to program for me. He's going to do a better job for me. I attracted that. See, the law of attraction, all attraction, you know, the power of your thinking, right. works best if you're in a positive energy situation. And believe it or not, when there's negative, you can associate yourself with the positive energy more easily. Really? Yes. I'm not saying you should go out and say, whip me, beat me, and all that. <laughs> well, it's subconsciously, we seem to do that, though. Yeah. yeah. I know. And, and so it's good to know that if you actually end up doing that, that uh, good things yeah. can happen. Yeah, good things can happen. Yeah. Well, you know, there is actually, our culture as a whole is playing around with the concept of transmuting, you're going for the negative and transmuting it into the positive. That's what you know, the Goths are experimenting with, for example. The Goths, G-O-T-H. The people that are, wear the, black all the time. Yeah, the people that wear black, the young people primarily that wear black all the time. But I think that there's an aspect of it that, that people, uh, they're so cynical about our society and sort of, and, and that they don't hook the energy in either way because they're kind of neutral. I mean, cynicism kind of, to me, it puts you into sort of neutral. It puts you into stasis. You you you, you can't do anything. Yeah, you, you have no action. But in you're your safe. Life. You think you're that not, you're you, safe. You think you're safe, but you're not safe at all. Any energy and, that and comes I, along and, and can hit you. And I think that you. cynicism does deflect some negativity. One minute. One minute. Okay, so we have one minute to to put it all in a nutshell and. You can attract what you want in your life, but you have to learn how to retain it. To retain it, you've got to learn how to deflect the negativity. Or and transmute it. Or transmute it into something positive. And you can do it through techniques, through the earth right, elements. Actually, the earth elements, or just knowing how the energy of this world works. If you know how the energy of this world works, you can have power. But you have to know the negative energy as well as the positive for you truly to have power, success, and happiness. <laughs> okay, that, that, that about sums it up. Yes. Uh, this has been Philip Lippitz, and I'm Molly Cheshire, and this is Meetings with Remarkable People, and um, hopefully this will be useful too. So you can finish up the tape. You have eight more minutes for the Okay, so, uh, so we have eight more minutes that we can. Uh, but that, that, oh, that, th this is like Oprah after the. Uh... Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can take any amount, and Manhattan Neighborhood Network, it's only 28 minutes.
Right. Oh. So we try to get these so that they're they're squished for uh, M and N, and then the Molly News Network. Um, so, I mean, that, that sums up the Molly News Network. Uh, what was I going to say? But but I mean, that, that about sums it up. And I mean, that's that's basically what you teach in yeah. your workshops. Yeah, and that's what I want to work on that secret project that will remain yeah, secret. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that's. With, I'm really excited about. Okay, you you see how it really can. Absolutely. Out there, uh, we lost your connection, Rosie. Four eight four three four zero nine double zero seven, and I'm wanting to know if she found this useful for deflecting negativity because I cannot think of yeah, the, the uh, conspiracy theorists. A I mean, they're the glaring example of what's of, uh, the usefulness of deflecting negativity. No, no. I, 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 like I want to say something. But the conspiracy theorists may be onto something absolutely correct. Right. But they're drowning in the negativity oh, I of what it is that they're concentrating their energy in. So for right. them to get their message out to the world, no, and not, and not only they that, they have to know how to deflect the negativity because they're dealing with a negative situation. No, and, and also just to maintain yeah. some kind of stability in their life. You know, right. I mean, I find that people that are dealing with not just conspiracy theories, but people that deal with, you know, the dying abuse, children, or, yeah, 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 that that. And healers, a lot of yeah. healers have this problem. They look, don't look at all these. Remember back in the '80s, where all these guys were getting arrested after they had a big television evangelism, or they were out on the street with some, you know, 15-year-old crack whore, and they're sitting there saying, "You know, I don't know how I ended up here. I just wanted to help people." It, all the negativity right. that they took from doing the healings well, made them do something and crazy. Ro and rock stars, I mean, it made so much, so much sense when Swami talked about how celebrities right. and, you know, sort of rock and roll people have such difficulty in their personal right. life because, you know, you, 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 you get the fame which raises the positivity right. and all the fortune, yeah. and then all of a sudden there's just all this dysfunction that comes along with it. They, you know, one of the things I want to do is get out there and give seminars just for the rich and famous because, you know, it'd be the same thing you all get, but I'll charge them more. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> but they Just tell really, them it's a special process. Yeah, it's a special process <laughs> for them. But, but they <laughs> need it so right. much because we teach in this society how to get fame, how to get power, how right. to get success. But we don't teach how to handle the consequences of it. Right. So that you get these people who are great little rock stars or movie actors and they end up on drugs or well, psychotic or I, whatever. I think that there's an intensity that, that that kind of fame and fortune entails. You know, it's exponentially worse. And the responsibility for that kind of positivity, as you, as you could say, you know, it's tough to handle. You know, oh, yeah. even, even for people that can decharge properly. I mean... You know, Swami's had a lot of stuff going on. Swami tries, Swami Kaleshwar, our teacher, tries deliberately to avoid fame. Well, but even so, I mean, he's had a lot of people come after him. Oh, yeah. And, you know, oh, yeah. There's a bomb. I mean, you know, yeah, it was yeah, insane. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, I mean, luckily, you know, so even if you are doing these techniques at a very high level, it's, 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 it's not easy to manage. Exactly. But nevertheless, it's still worthwhile because it's better than doing nothing. But, you know, he once said, a saint is someone who can turn any situation to their advantage. That means in a negative situation, he can find the positive energy and ride it. Right. No, and he came back from that whole situation oh, yeah. in, a, absolutely. In, in a much, much brighter. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, can we talk to your mom? Yeah, yeah. So you want me to hear what the... I, I just voice... No. Without a film, just voice... No, no, film, without you here. No, no, but there's no microphone, Paula. Okay, well, let's give it... I don't want to be photographed. Well, then just... Really? All right. Um, anyway, I think we're probably at the end of the tape anyway. No, we have two minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes to save the world. Say something profound. Yes, exactly. <laughs> something <laughs> profound. I, was, I only wanted profinity and pro something profound. Profinity. Yeah, yeah, right. Profanity. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted to save the world. You have a different expectations. Uh, um, well, I think that when you're working with these kind of uh, energies, that it is about saving. It, it's working within the material world. Right. Uh, but although, you know, as said below, so above. So I don't think that this really changes 
even once you step across the divide? Well, when you step across the divide, negativity is a function of this physical creation. When you're in the world of the soul, you're beyond that. So the saints learn how to transfer their consciousness to their souls and soul travel, and that's how they avoid negativity. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my travels on the other side is, is that there is, you know, this whole idea of like angels and demons, I, I don't think is, I think that's the way it is. You know, there, there is positivity and negativity in the angelic realms as well. I think that you even have to go beyond right. that to get beyond but, but negativity. But if you go into that realm for just a few minutes, you just decharge your negativity. You That's why the saints it. let their bodies die and then bring them back to life. Yoga Samadhi, it's called. Yeah, that's to decharge the negativity. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Body? Yeah, Swami's done it many times. I've been there when his body was dead. You know, no brain waves, no EKG, no heartbeat. So it's a massive decharge? Yes. Hmm. So how does this affect the day-to-day -day life, like life with your family? Oh, that? Ah. Uh. <laughs> I, I can tell you. What it does is, is that, like, like, for example, if you have a family that argues a lot, and, and you actually got everybody to do some decharging techniques. Everybody. Everybody. Even, no, but even if, even yeah. if not everybody will do it, that there's more family harmony, and that you won't have as much, you know, discord in the family. So I think that <laughs> I want you on camera. <laughs> I, I think these techniques are extremely practical. Yeah. Are we done with the tape? We just have a minute left. Uh, I mean, but back to the fact of, of, of the idea that in the, in the other world that it, it's not all it's a, it's rosy over. is is Almost. no one minute. Um, Paula, what was that guy's name? That the. Um, the Institute down in Virginia, the Monroe Institute. The Monroe Institute. He was saying that when he Bob. went out of his body, that there were just nasty beings that were on the other side as well, and that he nasty was sort of threatened. No, by he them. was staying in this creation. There are nasty beings in this creation. But he was he was journeying He's, outside of the body. I see. But you're yeah, saying that the, bull, the, yeah. the the body was still alive. Yeah, the body was alive, and he didn't know how to. He I was see. moving his consciousness within the world of spirits and all that. And there's nasty beings. Oh, there. I see what you're saying. So that when yeah. you get beyond the the spirits Spirit world, that there's a, yeah. that there's right. another right. dimension. Right. Right. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay. Anyhow, thank you. That's so it. I guess we're out. So I can make this. Is it still? Is it still happening? Goodbye, dream. Goodbye. I wonder how many people stayed for this dream. So, Rosalie, I hope that you got something out of that. And we'll see you tomorrow at 12 noon, same time, same place. Radical same bat channel. TV. Oh, my goodness, it's almost 2 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. It is 2 o'clock. 1.59. Oh, okay, I'll do that later. <laughs> how much does this cost? Um, that's like 500 bucks. That mic. Yeah. That's that mic's not